both players have a little bit of spice in their list here. You know, you've, we've seen OBS on ag aggro. You know, Mike Sigris did top eight the Pro Tour with OBS on aggro, but this is a different take on it. You know, he wasn't playing Become Immense, for example. This will be a windswept teeth. Going to sacrifice that and play a Soldier of the Pantheon. That's actually a card that lines up pretty gosh darn good against Brad's deck. Really nice against Siege Rhino. Uh, you know, Butcher the Horde can't block it. Of course, it'll get in the way, of course, but doesn't doesn't line up too bad. There is a card that it does line up pretty poorly against in Seder Wayfinder. That's going to turn over a couple yeah, of cards that's, here. Yeah, he played that. I was like, that's, that's not what Aaron wants to see at all. Not at all. A Mountain, a Sansep Citadel, a Wooded Foothills, and a Siege Rhino are the cards that are turned over here. The difficulty here is that the ways that Aaron would normally punch through here don't work with Soldier of the Pantheon. So he has Obzon Charm. Um, you know, you can't actually... Anafenza, these are the things that pump up his creatures, but Soldier of the Pantheon actually has protection from all of those. So this is a really... This is a turn two play that Aaron really didn't want to see. Yeah. There's only two of these in Brad's deck, too. One showing up right now. Brad is going to take his time and figure out what land he wants to take. He'll go with the Citadel, so he may have to take the next turn off. He's at 19, as is Barrich. Brad will finish shuffling Aaron's deck as he did crack a fetch, and we will go to Aaron's second turn. It's interesting. You normally would think to yourself that you'd want to take the basic, but I think what Brad values here is to have a source of green and black mana that he does not have to take any damage to use. Barrett's no interest in making the trade here, so Soldier of the Pantheon's going to hang back on defense. What Soldier actually can do is it can give him some insurance against cards like Crackling Doom. Yep. Another soldier did Barrage. Now, these two decks that we're watching here, they are both very greedy on mana. Brad's a four-color mid-range deck. You can see his mana. Well, he's drawn it on Barrage. I don't think he has black mana right now. There's a forest. Yeah, he just has to pass the turn back. Well, it's all tongue-in-cheek of passing the turn. He has a Boon Seder in his hand, which we'll probably see here. But you're right. Barrage does not have his fourth, his third color of mana. You see he does have Anafenza, Siege Rhino, all hold up in his hand alongside Blood Soaked Champion. If he doesn't find black, Brad is going to start putting him away. There's the Boon Seder. That'll come in. Barrett will draw a card. There's the black mana. It's big. Right on time. That Barrett gets to play again. It's untapped. It will be a little bit painful, but I'm sure he doesn't mind. We're coming out of the red zone now. Air of the Wilds will trigger, of course, as Ferocious has been met, so it's a 3-3. Remember, it's a death touch 3-3 as well, so that Courser can't even block it. Barrett want to go with the Rhino. There's the black mana. Had it all along. <laughs> Could play an offense of this turn. You know, and if I've learned anything about standard, it's that if you have four untapped mana and Siege Rhino, the correct play is probably just Siege Rhino. Well, he has made the quote-unquote correct play. As Nelson is down to 11, Barish is up to 22. Brad draws a card. You can see in his hand he does have a copy of Crackling Doom, so he does have an answer to the Rhino right now. Certainly won't. Is under consideration. Barish's deck is just relentless on the aggression. Just keeps coming and coming and coming. Blood soaked champion, a great demonstration of that. And Brad's got to figure out a way to actually slow this deck down because this is a style of deck I don't think he wants to play against. One thing that Barrage's deck cannot deal with, if you look at Brad's hand, is Elspeth's son's champion. Yep. If Brad can survive to that point, just almost on that turn, if you cast Elspeth and you plus it, it's a Siege Rhino is his only form of evasion, and that's Trample. And outside of that, it's. There's not much you can do to get past a horde of 1-1s. One Wayfinder turns over a couple of really nice cards. Butcher the Horde, Siege Rhino, Lightning Strike. The Mountain goes to Nelson's hand. That'll be his land for the turn. Probably considering playing a course of this turn, but he also has a copy of Crackling Doom in his hand, so the options are uh, they're pretty good ones here for Brad. Both very powerful cards. Looks like he's going to go with the Crackling Doom. And he's going to main phase it. So there goes the Siege Rhino. Barrett will take two. Brad will have to take one to cast a due to Manic Influence, and Aaron will quickly untap. Time for him to draw a card. It's a copy of Obzon Charm. Aaron did gain one off the Soldier of the Pantheon. Don't want to forget about that trigger. Now there's an Offensa. And now here's an attack with Air of the Wilds, which again is a 3 3. Right, so can get past both these Seder Wayfinders. The Seders have done a great job of neutralizing that Soldier of the Pantheon, but Air of the Wilds has just had its way here. Nelson's going to untap those five lands. He'll draw one. I believe it's a copy of Sansep Citadel, though it does look like he has a chain of the rocks in his hand as well for that lone mountain. Well, a little bit of a reprieve for Barrett that it didn't that Brad's land comes into play tapped, but he's still got his work cut out. See Drino on Brad's side. As soon as Brad gets that sixth land, it's gonna be Elspeth. And these two are just throwing haymakers at each other. Here's Chain of the Rocks. Take care of your best card. There's the Sansep Citadel. Pass the turn back over to Barrett. Barrett is gonna draw with Nelson at nine. It's a copy of Lana Warways. 
Nelson is stabilizing. Well, I suppose Siege Rhino is pretty good at helping do that. Absolutely. Bears will offer the trade. I think Brad's going to take it. Yep. Bear does have Death Touch. There's a land. This is a very late to the party blood soaked champion. Aaron will take one to cast that. The gas in the tank is running out here. As Aaron does not have a great answer to just Elspeth making tokens. And I think Brad knows it. Mm -hmm. He's going to cast it. It's going to go on eight. You think a Brad stack is, you know, he can be aggressive with Butchers and Siege Rhinos. We know he's capable of that, and he's got removal spells and can kind of play that kind of tempo game, but he can also play this kind of game, which is, let's play an Elspeth and see if you can beat this. Most people can't. Well, Aaron certainly can't beat it with the cards he has in hand, so he's going to draw two off Obzon Charm. Yeah, a couple of cards here. He picked up three spells. Bloodso Champion, Nair of the Wilds, and his draw for the turn was a copy of Gather Courage. Yeah, and you know, these are great cards and really complement his strategy well. The difficulty is just getting through one ones. He doesn't have very much evasion. There's the tramplers he has is just Siege Rhino. And outside of that, he just doesn't have evasion. Yeah, he does have that one singleton copy of Soren Solemn Visitor. All right, that could make a flyer. That could make a flyer, yeah. There's a Bloodsoak Champion. He's going to bring back the Bloodsoak Champion from the graveyard as well, since it has satisfied the raid trigger and just passed the turn back over to Nelson. Nelson's going to untap all those lands. He's stabilized at eight. Aaron's making a go of it here, but he's going to force Brad to chump a lot of the soldiers away every turn. But I don't know if Aaron's going to make progress. He's just, it's like he's treading water right now. Courser, reveal a mountain. Trigger, gain a life up to nine. Now it's a top card, Crackling Doom. Not bad. Better than a random card, that's for sure. Three more soldier tokens gonna come into play. Nelson with no interest in attacking and offense of the draw here for Barrett. Another one that can't get through all these soldiers. You can see the difference too between starting with a Bloodsoaked Champion versus starting with the Soldier of the Pantheon. Yeah, Bloodsoaked would have been a lot stronger here. He would have been able to trade it for some of the satyrs, though he didn't have too many turns with spare mana. Yeah. Sitter Wayfinder just put it put a start to a halt. You know? Yeah, it cost, I mean, that kept Soldier of the Pantheon from swinging at least four times, and there were situations where Brad was under eight life. That Wayfinder did make the difference. Let's see what we have here. Crackling Doom. I think this is going to take care of Anafenza. Though Barrett's just have a copy of Gather Courage in his hand that he could cast if he'd like to. The big question here, and I'll ask you this one, is do you want to give away the fact that you have Gather Courage at a spot like this? Because no, we can't I imagine that people know. I don't know. think so. Yeah, Air's going to trade with the two tokens. You are at 7-0, which means you've probably been sitting by each other for most of the tournaments. There's a decent chance Brad already knows about the Gather Courages. We talk around the tournament, too. Yeah, there's, there, you know, he's, Aaron played on camera last round. Um, there are only four players who are undefeated this round, which means there were only eight last round, which means these guys would have been very good chance they would have been next to each other. Brad will trigger the Courser. Swamp comes into play. He's up to nine. See the light totals nine to eight here. And now Nelson is going on the offensive, we think. Doesn't seem like a bad spot to do so. He can get pretty aggressive here. Yep. Here comes the attack. Bloodsoak champions can't block. Soldier's not doing much. Barrett will draw. And he knows he's go. beat. Brad Nelson going to win game number one here over Aaron Barrett. Four color mid range up a game here over the very aggressive OBS on aggro deck. As we turn our attentions to the sideboard, we'll start with Aaron Barrett. You have that deck list in front of you. Sure. So he's up against a mid range deck. You have to think he has some cards to deal with this situation. Um, he has Banishing Light and Murderous Cut, both of which we saw against Red Green Monsters be really effective. I would think that he would want us to do a similar thing to knock these blockers out of the way. Other than that, his deck's already trying to sneak under a mid-range deck. His main deck strategy is more or less what he wants. Other side of things, I'm looking at a Glare Heresy and a Johnny Mentor of Heroes, and we've seen Brad sideboard a little bit today as we've watched him and also at the deck tech. Three Zen goes to the Reveler, two Thoughtseize, two Utter and four Anger of the Gods, two Cops and Hostilities, and that, uh, that second to last card I mentioned, that's a four of, oh boy. I mean, Let's see how well this sideboard plan works. Can the mana support it? Because porting in four Anger of the Gods and a Glare of Heresy just seems excellent here. I don't know if Barrett's deck can beat Anger of the Gods. It seems very hard. And Offense is a great card. 
Don't get me wrong, and that's a card that will allow him to beat it, but boy, oh boy, it's his hard. anger good. Anger's great against what he's doing. Anna Fenza survives it, Siege Rhino survives it. Fleece Main Lion and Rakshasa Death Dealer both can kind of survive it in the right circumstance, but all the other creatures just do die to Anger of the Gods. Well, these players will finish sideboarding and shuffling up for game number three, excuse me, game number two, hoping for a game number three between these two, but Cardboard cracks something that we do have three of, three paperback books. Yeah, so this is based on the popular internet cartoon, or comic more like. They've been compiled into three books, and you they can be yours. Go to starcitygames.com slash cardboard crack, each one at $12.99. Sweet comic. They have a Twitter. They're in the Star City Games newsletter. If you've never seen it before, you should definitely check it out, especially if you enjoy magic as much as Matthias and I do. Three books available at starcitygames.com slash cardboard crack right now. The thing I've loved about this tournament so far, a couple of things, honestly. You know, one is these players really just battling each other for the open series points to qualify for the player championship. Again, after just about every match, they're getting up, hey, did, do you know if that guy won? Do you know if Dylan Donegan won? Do you know if Eric Rill won? Just the conversation uh, between the players and, you know, when they get paired against each other, like we saw with Brad Nelson and Jim Davis, they had a fantastic match against each other. I definitely enjoyed that. But for those who felt that standard was really just kind of boring and dry, this tournament has proven that that is just not the case. We've yeah, seen so, much, so many different decks. There have been a ton of different decks being played today. If you think about our decks that are, the things we've seen that are undefeated, you know, okay, four color mid range, OBS on aggro, and Jeskai. Okay, those are three very different archetypes. And then in our X1 bracket, we have Esper Control, Esper Planeswalkers, yep. Blue White Control. Um, we have things from all, all sorts of different ends of the spectrum here. Absolutely. The, the only thing that we haven't seen is a Jeskai Ascendancy deck. Right. That's really it. Be it the Pro Tour version that made top eight, or be it the version that we saw Ivan Jen win SCG Oakland with a couple weeks back. We haven't seen We haven't seen Ascendancy peak. or Heroic combo. Yeah. Neither one of the Just Guy Ascendancy decks have made it. We saw Blue White Heroic a little bit earlier in the day, but it seems like that has tapered off quite a bit. So this has been fun. The diversity of standard. I mean, there are, it feels like seven, eight viable decks. Nothing is, you know, on the top of the mantle. Like we saw after Pro Tour Concept Arc here when Ari Lax won that tournament with Obzon midrange. Now, don't get me wrong, that deck is still very, very good, but it's beatable, which is a nice thing about this format. Yeah. I know you were worried it's, about control. You well, can do it? You can do it. I don't know. It's not easy. I like, I like, yeah, it's not easy right now. I think you, what you've forgotten is that, you know, back before Sinks of Revelation, you had to really earn your wins, man. You didn't just have the tap all by mana and turn to your opponents already conceding as you're tapping the mana. Those days are over. <laughs> you do have to work for it a little harder. A dig through time does feel like cheating sometimes, though, because that card's so good. The Sans of Citadel is going to start things off here for Barrage. Interesting cap. Does Brad have one of his sweepers in his opener? He has six in the sideboard, remember. Nomad Outpost. Aaron's going to sacrifice a... Windswept Teeth, dig out a forest. We'll see what his two drop of choice is. Again, he has Fleecemane Lion, Rakshasha Death Dealer, and Air of the Wilds in his deck. He's going to play the Fleecemane Lion. Nice, he has 3-3 three, three on turn two. See Blood Soaked Champion hanging out in his hand as well. He'll be able to give the Lion some company next turn. Along with Gather Courage to help him help protect him from Lightning Strike here. Nelson going to sacrifice Wooded Foothills. Let's see what Landy wants to go search up. Oftentimes when we've watched him, he's searched up a mountain here, but since he has a Nomad Outpost, he may not need a mountain, and he'll elect to get a forest. The most surprising part of this deck so far is that the mana, from what we've seen, it actually works quite well. Todd had a slight stumble with the deck when we watched it a little bit earlier. But besides that, Brad's shown that this deck has really good mana. Here's a Seder Wayfinder. This is probably part of the reason why. Well, this time the Seder Wayfinder is not going to be as good against Aaron. It'll still be a speed bump. And it did the unfortunate thing of showing Aaron what's going on here. It mills a copy of Anger of the Gods. Now, you know, the red lights have to go off. Okay. Hold on. Hold on. You're playing that card. Here's an attack for three. Barrage's draw was a copy of Thoughtseize. That might change the way he plays this one, and it will. I think, actually, Brad has a copy of Anger of the Gods in his hand, and you see one right now, along with a Bloodstained Mire, a Forest, a Swamp, a Siege Rhino, and Elspeth, too. So and he's then, taking a really slow approach. Yeah, I mean, his plan is Anger, Siege Rhino, Elspeth. He does not... No, it looks like he does have the second white for the Elspeth as well. He has that Tri-Land sitting off on the left. Oh, come on, you thought he was going to have mana problems? 
No, actually. <laughs> I really think that this, that this deck is going to open the door to more ambitious deck building later on in, in the season. Um, I don't think people have given the Trilands enough credit to just how close to Vivid Lands they actually are. Yeah, I agree. And it felt like the first time we came around, the Trilands kind of got underappreciated too. Your Arcane Sanctums of the world. Remember the black white deck that Luis Scott Vargas made top eight of Pro Tour Kyoto with? He was black white with four Arcane Sanctums. It's like, I don't need blue cards in my deck, but yeah. I need mana fixing. So I don't do anything on the first turn anyway. I mean, I think it was because Savage Lands was so good. Yeah, I forgot about that one. <laughs> that, that you just, there wasn't much exploring to do because I would, you'd just get your hand blightening. Well, there's Bloodstone Champion. This is interesting. He took Siege Rhino, and then he played the Bloodstone Champion, just knows that his opponent. Well, he is baiting pretty hard here with this Gather Courage uh -huh. in his hand. If you're Brad, you, the alarm bells should be sounding on Brad's side too. This is too, this is too easy. It's just, this is, this is so awesome because, you know, Aaron is playing against one of, if not the best standard players in the world. And you know that Brad just knows Ooh. so much about standard. It's like, and Aaron's just like, I don't care. This is, Aaron may not know his opponent here, so there's different aspects of the game that some of your better good players are good at. And as far as reading body language and figuring out, like, this bluff of, oh, yeah, no, don't play anger, okay? Like, Brad Nelson is the last person you want to run that against. Yeah. Like, yeah. And he's, and, and, and he's going to go catch. for it, but yeah. I don't think, you know, you see Brad just not even, not even flinch. I mean, yeah, that's going to happen. Aaron made it appealing. He loses his Bloodstone Champion for the game. And he's yep. perfectly fine with it. Now he's going to be attacking for three. So he's ahead on the board. Fourth land's going to come into play. And he's hoping he can just keep pushing his advantage. Yeah. I think it's more of a nose there. Yeah, Brad, Brad knew what he was getting into. Yeah. And that's fine. He did lose his Siege Rhino, which was the follow-up play. But it's not terrible for Brad right now. Kyrie had just passed the turn back. Barrett's going to draw a card. There's another copy of Gather Courage. There's a Windswept Heath. He also gets a chance to mon use the monstrosity on this Fleece Main line, which is pretty important. And yeah, the nice thing about Brad's deck is that he actually has outs to this in this situation because Crackling Doom. Exactly. It can, beat, it can actually beat the monstrosity. Let's see what the follow-up play is going to be. Yeah, he's going to Gather Courage. Punch him right to the face. Okay. All right. Is this maybe... Oh, my... Uh, three, four, five, five plus six is it? I think he might have a become a mess. That would put Brad to one. one. Huh. Yep. All right. That will put Brad, <laughs> make the police main line on 11 11. This reminds me of the last deck I saw Aaron playing, which was the Boros Charm Celestia Charm combo deck, yeah, where, you know, you'd, where you'd say no blocks. You'd be like, whoa, 16 you. <laughs> yeah. Like, that. It's reminiscent of that strategy. There's a swamp. Is it Elspeth time, perhaps? I'm not sure how he's going to get the last point of damage. I don't know on. either. Let's see what the draw is. Did not get a good look at it. I mean, there were some things to hope for there. It was possible that, you know, maybe Brad's last land was a fetch. There are a lot of things that Aaron can play for. That easy block. Press says, do you have any way to give Trample? I hope not. <laughs> no. Sure can't beat it if he did. Yeah, you can yep. activate monstrosity. Yep. Pass the turn back. Elspeth doesn't actually care too much about the monstrosity. She can make an army and then make them fly over all the same. Elspeth seems to be the one hole in Barrett's deck. It's so hard for him to beat. To be fair, okay, so in this situation, Eric can actually just draw Siege Rhino and get the job done. So he doesn't he need to wait. on the spot. Yeah, he doesn't need to wait fly or something like that. So Siege Rhino will actually get it done, unless Brad plays a Siege Rhino of his own. So he is drawing relatively alive in this spot. Yes, yeah, so Siege Rhino is an out. Yep, there's Corsair. Now Corsair starts to gain a little bit of life, so there is that. It has to get Brad up to four before he's out of range of a Siege Rhino top deck, however. And now we're getting aggressive. Hello, Xenagos, along with Soldier Tokens. Take this up. The reason he's getting aggressive, I think, is because he just wants to get this game over. Didn't get a great look. Looks like it's just a Not copy of Air. Not It's Air and Lanoir Wastes. Aaron getting so close here, but all equally impressive that just how quickly Brad's turning this game around. You know, 
Aaron has one more turn to draw Siege Rhino, and it's not because, because Brad will be at four, it's because Aaron will be at zero. Mm -hmm. Might be thinking, is Obzon, Char Obzon charming out in this situation, but it says you draw two cards and you lose two life. Yeah, the old sign and blood trick where you target your opponent does not work with Obzon Charm. Brad's reaching for some soldier tokens. Maybe Xenagos is going to go up as well. He wants to be able to deal as much damage as possible, make it a two-turn clock without exposing himself to anything that could hurt him. And there's the attack. Aaron will get to block part of it. Can he draw Siege Rhino to force game three? It's going to have to happen this turn. Three more soldier tokens. Oh, come on, top deck. Really do it? Can he bring it into a game three? He's going to need some luck. Brad, I love you, but come on, top deck. Don't do it, don't do it. Oh! <laughs> <laughs> We're going to game three. And we, <laughs> they both knew it, too. Oh, man. <laughs> Aaron Barrage, Brad Nelson, they're tied up. All right. That was a four outer Aaron hits right there. Whoo! A deep breath as we move yeah, on to game three. <laughs> that was an awesome game of magic right there. Man, I, let's see if I'm gonna watch yeah, both yeah. <laughs> yeah. See, you know, th this is the difference too, because Aaron's a young kid. You know, I think he's 17 right now. Uh, Brad is clearly a seasoned vet. You know, Brad just oh, don't draw siege rhino. Happens. And he, Gosh darn it! And Brad is the Brad is the ability to smile when it happens. Yeah. Too. He's like, oh, that's ridiculous. It, <laughs> Game three. Yeah, it's right? like you know, it's moving on. It's business as usual. But you gotta kind of take in the moment there. So big top deck there from Aaron Barrett. He's one game away. Hey, whoever wins this game is is locked for top eight. That's true. No, no, that. that was an important draw. Yes. Whoever wins this game is locked for top eight here. So, all righty then. Round three. Ha. Ha. It's going to be hard to top that game. That was really good. <laughs> that was really, really good Well, stuff. it's such an ambitious play when Aaron swings and just burns his whole hand to put Brad down to one. Because in that situation, I didn't know he had, like, I didn't get a good look at his hand. I knew he had Gather Courage, but I didn't know he had become immense. It would have been so easy, right, to just say, attack, monstrosity, deal you four, maybe I'll get my pumps in later, but he just says, dump you to one, because if he had waited, the pump spells would never get to do anything. No, because Els Elspeth's there. Yeah, Elspeth would have blocked the road the entire time, so him pulling the trigger on the pump spells was 100% correct. Gets him to one, Corsair brings Brad up to three. Right. And then Siege Rido ends three. the game. Only three. Siege Rido ends the game. <laughs> He's played very well. Every time, and it's funny because it's always you and I that are watching on camera. We've done the shows in Dallas together when he has been there, and now we're doing one here where, truth be I didn't expect him to be here this weekend. He's yeah, young, but he plays trip. really well. Yeah, no, definitely have streams on streams on Magic Online yep. as well, and really just has eyes for this archetype. Something every about, every time I've seen him online, it's it's this it's this as well. Yeah, he's always building. There's something about him and just like you know, ambitious three color like aggressive decks where if the mana breaks right, it, your deck is insane. It's so good, and when the mana doesn't like break right, it's just okay. Aggro combo decks almost. Yeah. Because yeah, you mentioned he was doing a lot of, you know, Boros Charming uh, Rampagery. Yes. People back when we were in Dallas and Celestia Charming and stuff like that, too. A lot of pump effects. He was play, play one, to two, one to three really efficient creatures and then pump them. Well, it's going to be game number three for these two players. Game number two was a real doozy. And to be fair, like, the thing that this style of deck that Aaron came up with Aaron likes to play can be weak to a the stack of kill spells. Deck. Absolutely, absolutely. And you know the other thing that was really interesting about that game too was the the turn about anger of the gods when he thought sees. And it's like I don't know if he got Brad in that situation or if Brad was just like, look, if you have a pump spell, it just is what it is. I have to get this part of the game over with. You know, because he plays a blood soaked champion of that and just saying, I dare you to anger the gods me right now. I double dog dare you. And Brad does. He saves his fleece main line and he goes on to win the game from there. Yeah. If Brad was thinking about Gather Courage or not, here's one thing that we know it's on his radar for this game. Yeah, absolutely. He's going to know it's there. He saw multiple copies that game. So once one copy is one thing, you know, you say, oh, okay, he's running a, a Gather Courage. When you see a second one, then it's the, all bets are off. You know, Aaron might have four. Here's a thought, sees. Murderous Cut, Lightning Strike, Corsair of Crew Fix, Butcher of the Horde, Elspeth, and I Look think all these, only one land. Look at all these cards. Well, there's one off the bottom. I believe yep. he has a second land. He has a wood, so he has a Wooded Foothills in okay. hand, and then the Nomad Outpost in play, but he doesn't have a third land for the Corsair yet. And I think the Corsair is the card that Brad may be using to try to keep this entire 
you know, House of Cards together. Yeah, it was uh, I have Lightning Strike and Courser. All right, Aaron says, I don't care about your Courser. Okie dokie. There's the Foothills, pass the turn back. Barrett will draw a copy of Anafenza. This is a Fleece Main Lion. He'll have to take two to cast it. He'll pass the turn back. Aaron dealing five to himself on the first two turns of the game. Nelson's draw was a mountain. It's good, but not great. Mm -hmm. uh, you can't cast this, the Courser off this. One thing he can do is cast Murder's Cut, though. He's, he's one short there, too. Well, cost f so Foothills will get the second card in the graveyard? Oh, right, the Foothills. Yep. It's a fetch land. Yes, he can cast Murder's Cut. I don't know if he wants to pull the trigger on that just yet. It looks like he doesn't, willing to take three points of damage. Barrett's going to play a Santhep Citadel. Follow-up play is copy of Air of the Wilds. And what we might have here is a situation where it's just, I hope you don't have anger the gods. You really can't do much about it. I, I don't think Aaron has a copy of Gather Courage in his hand. So he's just going to try to push through yeah. it. Well, he didn't see an Anger of the Gods when he thought seized Brad. And that's yeah. probably, like, his deck is soft enough to Anger of the Gods that he probably just can't always play around the card. I mean, he doesn't know Brad's hand. Maybe he plays around it. But I think when you don't see it off a of thought seize, you stop respecting the card because it simply costs you too much opportunity to, to play the whole game like Brad has one. There's Murder's Cut. It's going to take down the Fleece main line. See the light total is 14 to 16. Nelson is going to draw. It's a copy of Lightning Strike. His mana is going back to hurt him a little bit now. He'll cast Lightning Strike on the main phase, get Air of the Wilds out of play, pass the turn back over to Barrage. Barrage will draw a card. He has a Rakshasha Death Deal in his hand. He just drew a Lana War Waste. He could play two two drops, or he could just play Anafenza. Yeah, good options here. There's some appeal to playing Anafenza because then you'll actually get the Anafenza trigger. However, playing Rakshasa Death Dealer and the Air of the Wilds is more mana efficient. How does he best want to capitalize on Brad's stumble? As soon as Brad starts hit, hits land four, his whole hand is going to be unlocked. Yeah, this is really interesting, too, because by deploying these two threats, he opens himself up to an anger of the gods, but there isn't one there. So all Nelson can do is pass the turn back. Barrett's drew with thought sees. He's casting it, taking three in the exchange, and you've seen Brad has drawn a lot of expensive cards. Two Elspeths, two Butchers, and a Courser. Courser bites the dust, and offense is coming to play, and Barrett is going to start attacking here for five. He's taking so much damage. Barrett's is down to seven right now. Not that that'll matter if Brad can't do anything about it, but... Yeah, and that's going to do it. do it. Aaron Barrett's going to win this match here over Brad Nelson. The youngster has made another top eight here on the Open Series. Well, congratulations to Aaron, and what a turnaround it was. Going back to a timely, timely Siege Rhino to force game three, and Aaron is into the top eight for Brad. Seven and one has another shot next round. It's a tough loss here for Brad. Again, if we were to end things today, right now he'd be qualified for the Players' Championship, but if he's able to make top eight, it'll give him that space. He doesn't have to worry that much about people underneath him, let alone winning the tournament, which would be 20 Open Series points. But Barish plays a spoiler here. He is in top eight once again. We don't get to see him often on the Open Series, but when we do, kid wins. I mean, the 10 points that Brad